Armored Corps Law, Global Armaments, History Global Armaments was a powerful corporation in the United States, Japan, China, the Philippines and Australia during the years of the sovereign nations. They used this massive base of influence to grab huge amounts of power during and after the National Dismantlement War, which along with five other corporations, they started claiming that governments could not maintain control over their countries with dwindling resources. It should be noted here that the corporation had stakes in algebra for rations and interior union for fossil fuels, showing that even this giant could not grow enough food to feed its people, nor have access to the fuels needed for everyday work. Along with this, GA also had two subsidiary companies, known as Kuga and MSAC International, which you can see our reports on. Still, it is after the National Dismantlement War, where GA rule started to rock as they formed a deep rival with the Bernard and Felix Foundation, Throughout this period over resources, small-scale disruptions to production lines, and an increasing number of skirmishes occurring up to the Lynx Wall. Another thorn in this giant's foot came from their relationship with the Rilaniard Group, which by this time grew unstable as Rilaniard subsidiary Avkvit started to take over the GA's European branch. As a result of this, in Armored Core 4, Anatolia's mercenaries sponsored by GA allowing them to lean heavily on the next pilot in their machine to deal with foes without having to use their own resources to do so. The corporation shows this when eventually GA Europe, the European branch of GA, decides to sever relations with the American parent group and attempts to join Avogit and Raelianard. This is seen by GA as a major threat to their power and to show they would not simply sit by and watch, the corporation orders its sponsored mercenary to raid the former GA European base of research and development, the Heidi Arsenal. This results in heavy damage to a number of advanced weapon platforms, including the platforms designed to carry the Soldius cannons, as well as the deaths of many former GA workers and soldiers. In the wake of this attack, Raelinard and GA would declare war on each other, starting the Lynx War, but Raelinard would quickly take a backseat as BFF starts to interfere with GA operations in Europe, leading to the two companies to primarily engage each other during the first stage of the Lynx War in Chapter 4 of AC4. However, GA would emerge victorious from this battle between giants, as cooling on Anatolia's mercenary once more, they ordered their mercenary to take out BFF's lead lynx, Mary Shelley, and the BFF's seaborne headquarters, Queen's Lance, which the lynx does, leaving BFF in shambles with no one to lead them. GA is quick to offer its aid and help rebuild the corporation, only to fill it with its own top men and women. In our group would attack Anatolia with experimental Kojima weapons, some suggest this may have been a brash retaliation, while others think that Raynard saw this mercenary as a GA's ace up their sleeve, and once they were gone, GA would be open for attack. However, Anatolia's mercenary is able to defeat them before serious damage is done, sending Raynard back into the shadows and giving GA the confidence needs to turn their attention to the group that had caused them so much trouble. To do this, GA aligned itself with the Rosenthal slash Omar group in the process, acquiring the service of Joshua O'Brien. Anatolia's mercenary's friend slash rival for a number of missions against Raelinard, which shook their foe with the loss of more troops, arms, fort, and resources. In the end, to put a final nail in Raelinard's coffin, Anatolia's mercenary alongside Rodenthal's Leonhardt and Omar's Mindo would take out Raelinard's elite next squad in the Lost City of Hope, before sending the mercenary to take out Raelinard's base operations in Canada, with only normals and gun turrets to protect them. GA could watch as their asset killed thousands, and they could wash their hands of all of it. Finally, with the end of another corporation, GA would emerge victorious as one of the victors of the Lynx War, becoming the dominant corporation over the entire planet. But this power would not last long. For in Armored Corps for answer, with the formation of the League after the Lynx War, GA would be unable to maintain their newly gained power inside the League of Ruling Corporations, which is quickly hijacked by OMS Science Technology with officials and high-ranking members all being linked to this new powerhouse. Therefore, with no chance of outplaying the political might of Omar, GA would begin operating independently of the League, only utilizing the group when it was beneficial to them, such as for terrorist attacks or dealing with Lionark, who now had their once mighty mercenary working for them. In their operations during this, they often allied with BFF, whom, as already stated, they rebuilt after the Lynx War leading the team to speculate that behind the scenes a GA official was running BFF, or the current heads of BFF had no choice but to be at the beck and call of their saviours. Most of the missions requested by a G 
most often involve actions against Taurus, a successor to both GAE and Avakit, and regarded as the biggest liability to GA's continued dominance. They would eventually return to full league membership when Orca emerged as a serious threat to the continued corporation dominance. Their massive military knight infrastructure, along with their contingent of Next, led by the Lynx Rhodey, would play a critical role in the course of the war, with Rhodey being personally involved in two of the chapters. Depending on what you believe, either GA's contribution either aided this noble cause, or that even with all this might they would fail to stop Orca, but would continue to hold on to their power even on a dying planet. Products GA America is a manufacturer of high AP heavy parts. Their weapons are characteristic heavy, with high ammunition numbers. They fire live ammunition and feature high attack power. Some examples of this are the GAN ON 02 and SSWBS and the GAN 01 SSGC. But along with this, their GAN O NSS line of products are said to have been developed to help average pilots develop top next piloting capabilities. How they would do this we can only guess, however the results are clear as GA still lost many soldiers to next pilots of other corporations and Orca. The idea behind GA's building process is to design parts as sets for a frame rather than individually, which makes the longest part of this process coming up with the concept early on in development, which could take several months to do so. In return, however, weapons and stabilizers can then be made quickly thanks to the data gained from the finished frame, cutting down production time to a simple day compared to months. It's no wonder then that the parts have also been made in collaborations with Asiwa Heavy Industrials, such as the Raiden L to boost relationships and show off their industrial might. However, one cannot mention J without the mention of the line of next schematics of the Sunshine series, a representation of GA's greatest strength, durability and firepower. It has high AP for its class, great resistance to solid ammunition and high tolerances. With heavy armor and multiple solid shell weapons and missiles, the Sunshine is a versatile unit capable of taking on most targets from close to mid-range and serves well as a support unit. Of course, along with next parts and schematics, Glow of Marmons also dove into the production of arms for to keep up with other corporations and maintain its power in its controlled regions. Such examples of these include the Great Wall, best described as a several mile long giant train, equipped with long range ballistics in the form of huge Gatling cannons and heavy missile ordnances. Internally, it boosts a large carrying capability for normals and possible production capabilities. Next is the Gigabase, an amphibious arms fort armed with a very powerful high cover main cannon, several small defense turrets and missile launchers, making it a formidable long range weapon. Mission briefings and various comments note that this AF is quite old, implying that it may have been the first true arms fort. And finally Land Crabs, mass produced arms fort, utilized by GE and Interior Union. GA land crabs are equipped with high caliber cannons, whereas the interior union land crabs are equipped with very accurate strafing lasers. Both of these designs are also equipped with six missile launchers mounted on the sides, below and between the main weapons. Using tread mounted on articulated legs with similarities to those of a crab, this particular arms fort has excellent terrain crossing capabilities for its size and a top speed of 50 km per hour even on even ground. They serve both as mobile fortresses providing heavy power and carry units capable of destroying small groups of normals. Lynx employed by Global Armaments, Anatolia's mercenary, pilot of Thinker in Armored Core 4 and White Glint in Armored Core for answer. Whereabouts unknown. Enrique Elmanco, pilot of Tarana and a next designer. Whereabouts unknown. May Greenfield, pilot of Merrygate. Whereabouts unknown. Menuru. Pilot of Primitive Light, killed in action by Anatolia's Mercery in Mission Internal Purge. Rhodey, Pilot of Feedback, whereabouts unknown. Unite Mons, Pilot of Tyrant, killed in action by Next Prototypes at the Leventier facility. In truth, looking over the file, Gove Marmons did well for themselves as a corporation, however, this praise should be taken lightly, as even they could not hide the blood in their hands of war. And in the end, if the stories are true, they did nothing to stop Orca, only waiting to see how they could profit from it. This ends the report on the corporation known as Global Armaments.